If I told you there was one cognitive bias in shopper marketing so powerful that leveraging it could increase your sales more than any other tactic, you'd want to know about it, wouldn't you? That bias is called social proof, and this video is going to teach you exactly what it is and why it's so powerful. If that sounds good to you, grab a coffee and let's get into it. Hey, I'm Jason Retail Geek Goldberg. I'm the Chief Commerce Strategy Officer at the Publicis Group. So I work with many of the biggest brands and retailers in the world. This is a four-part series on the psychology of shopper marketing. In part one, we talked about how important trust is to the commerce relationship. Now, in part two, we're gonna look at the absolute best way to earn that trust. It's a cognitive bias that we call social proof. So what is social proof? It's a term coined by author Robert Cialdini in his best-selling book, Influence, The Psychology of Persuasion. He wrote it in 1984, and it's a book that details six cognitive biases that can be used to help influence consumers. So those six biases were reciprocation, commitment and consistency, social proof, liking, authority, scarcity, and a number of years later, he wrote another book called Persuasion, in which he added a seventh principle called Unity. All of these cognitive biases can be used very effectively in commerce, but by far the most important is the one that he called social proof. And his definition of social proof is, people want to follow the lead of individuals around and like us. And the way I like to say it is that, People want to know that someone like them made a decision before them and had a good outcome. So what's the most popular version of social proof? In e-commerce, it's ratings and reviews. You'd be far more likely to sit through this video if you knew that I was a podcaster with 234 perfect five-star reviews on iTunes. And you're not alone. In fact, Ratings and reviews have been determined to be the most influential attribute you can put on a product detail page to increase sales. So in this incredibly self-serving study conducted by Bizarre Voice, they found that if you add just one review to a product detail page, conversion on that page can go up by 30%. If you can earn 50 reviews, conversion could go up to 30%. When you can get to 150 reviews, conversion can go up by 40%. So there's almost nothing you can do to a product detail page that's more likely to drive additional sales than collect great reviews and social proof to put on that page. And so it'll come as a surprise to no one that it's one of Amazon's biggest competitive advantages that they have more social proof than anyone else. This is a little known but terrifying page on Amazon's website called the Amazon Top Customer Reviews page. I like to call it the Reviewers Hall of Fame. And by far the most successful reviewer on Amazon is a woman, Joanne Daneman. And she has written about 6,700 reviews on Amazon. And those reviews have been found to be helpful by other shoppers almost 100,000 times. Think about how many reviews you've written in your entire life. Now think about how many times you've written a review of someone else's review. Pretty rare, right? And yet 100,000 people did exactly that for Joanne Daneman. So if we assume that that 100,000 people that took the time to write the review means that a million or 10 million people actually benefited from her reviews, and if we imagine that the average order value on Amazon is about $60, Joanne Daneman alone may be responsible for more than a half a billion dollars of sales on Amazon. Pretty powerful, right? So remember my original definition of social proof is people like me. And so a way to make reviews even more effective is to filter them so that the shopper only sees reviews that are most likely to be relevant to him or her. If I'm thinking about renting a dress on Rent the Runway, I don't want to see all the reviews for that dress. I want to see reviews from women that are my size with my body type uh, so that I can accurately judge whether this dress would be flattering for me. So that's a great practice that we're seeing more and more of is the ability to have more granular attributes about the reviewers and the ability to filter those reviews for other shoppers like me. Now, 
What do I do for a product that's a little more subjective? We may not all have the ta same taste in handbags or sunglasses, and so reviews may be slightly less influential because we might not all love the same style. So another flavor of social proof that's emerging is uh, what we would call user-generated content. I think we can all agree that if someone bought some Maui Jim sunglasses and they thought they looked so fabulous in them that they uploaded a picture of them to Instagram to share with the world, then they were pretty confident that they had a pretty good outcome from that purchase. And if enough people do that, that's gonna serve as a terrific form of social proof that all have a good outcome from that Maui Jim purchase. So we're increasingly seeing e-commerce sites that reflect all of that social proof from users that have uploaded user-generated content to the various social media networks. And however much of that we're seeing in the United States, it's even vastly more popular in Asia. So if we go look at the most popular e-commerce site in China, they don't just have one rating and review for a product, they actually have different categories of ratings and reviews. They have a review for how accurate the product description is, a review for how good the service on the product is, a review for how quickly it ships and how accurately it arrives. And they don't just have a five-star rating for each of those attributes, they actually have 20 different ratings, a scale of one to 20 for each of those different attributes. So consumers in China have learned to consume a lot more social proof to help influence the purchases that they ultimately decide. And social proof doesn't stop just there in China. The fastest growing e-commerce site in China is a site called Pinduoduo, or we sometimes say PDD. And the premise behind PDD is that social proof is built right into the value prop. Essentially, consumers get better deals by getting more of their friends to jump in on the deal with them. So essentially, consumers share their love of the product and their love of the deal for that product, and they get other people to participate with them. So they sort of amplify the social proof, is built right into the PDD platform, and it's made PDD the fastest growing e-commerce site in all of China. Another flavor of social proof that's wildly popular in China is what we in the U.S. would call influencer marketing. In China, they call it key opinion leader marketing. And if you were to go shop the big e-commerce sites in China in, say, 2015, they'd feel a lot like the biggest sites in the U.S. They'd be primarily product-based, search engine driven with a bunch of product detail pages behind them. But back in 2016, Alibaba redesigned the Tmall experience to be much more focused on influencers and less on individual products. In fact, today, the majority of traffic coming into the Alibaba ecosystem doesn't come into their e-commerce sites like Taobao and Tmall. It comes into their live streaming site, a video site featuring influencers or key opinion leaders, KOLs, that are producing essentially video-oriented commercials in which keep people can click and buy products. And those influencers earn a commission on each of those products. So most of those key opinion leaders in China are what we would call micro-influencers. They might be reaching 10 or 20,000 consumers and influencing them to buy products and they're making a commission on each sale. And so this has become a full-time job for millions of people in China. But occasionally, some of these influencers break out and become mega influencers. One of my favorite is a gentleman named Li Jaki. Uh, he's commonly known as Iron Lips because he sells a lipstick in China. And you may be laughing at the idea of a man being the most successful lip salesman, uh, lipstick salesman in China, but his premise is that he can try on all these lipsticks and because men's lips tend to be a little thicker, he can successfully try on 50,000 shades of lipstick a year. And his premise is that that would be much harder on a, a female salesperson's lips to try so many different lipsticks. But regardless, he's been wildly successful. He did a promotion with Alibaba where he sold over 15,000 tubes of lipsticks in just 15 minutes. And in fact, Jack Ma challenged him to a sell-off on Singles Day where the founder of Alibaba, Jack Ma, and Iron Lips squared off in a, a live streaming event. And it's pretty funny to watch Jack Ma try to sell lipstick to consumers in China. So that's great for online social proof. But what about the 80% or more of all purchases that still happen in a brick and mortar store? 
what's the social proof in a brick and mortar store? Well, the truth is there historically has not been a lot of social proof in brick and mortar stores, which is a huge opportunity. I like to joke that the best flavor of social proof that we're used to is the police tape around the last Black Friday deal at Best Buy or Walmart when customers were fighting over the, the last version of a product. And that tells all of us that it was a super popular product before it sold out. But increasingly, we're seeing retailers get really clever about bringing social proof into the brick and mortar store. So this is a shelf edge display that Kroger developed that provides digital product information in the brick and mortar store. And one of the things it prominently displays is ratings and reviews about the products that are on the shelf in the grocery store. Similarly, Walgreens has rolled out a digital cooler display called Cooler Signs that provides digital product information about cold beverages you can buy from Walgreens. And one of the prominent features on this sign are badges on the front of the pictures that show you which are the best reviewed, which are the most popular, which are the new exciting products that are available in the cooler. So they're bringing social proof to the grab and go beverage aisle at Walgreens. Of course, Amazon invented a grocery store this year called Amazon Fresh. And one of the most interesting features in that store is they've replaced all the paper fact tags with digital price tags. And one of the things they do on these digital price tags is they prominently display how many reviews each product got and what their average star rating is. So in the same way that ratings and reviews have been the most influential attribute on Amazon.com, we're now likely to see a future in which ratings and reviews become the most influential attribute for selling chips in a grocery store. And think about what a big disruption that will be to the grocery industry. And it doesn't just stop in grocery. Earlier this month, Amazon rolled out a new hair salon in London. And a big goal of that hair salon is to sell professional beauty products to consumers in the salon. And so they've created a new digital sign that displays product information about the professional caliber beauty products. And as you can see, they're prominently displaying the ratings and reviews, all the social proof for those products. And this is a gesture based system. So you can point at any of the products on the shelf and the digital sign will give you the ratings and reviews for that product. But of course, Amazon's taken it even a step further. They don't just have social proof displays in all their various retail concepts. They've actually invented a retail concept that is all about social proof. So the Amazon four star stores are stores that only carry products that have earned four stars or better on the Amazon platform. So essentially a whole store dedicated to social proof. And remember our definition is people like me. So in the store, Amazon has created individual displays that target particular subsets of users to let them know the popular products for people like them. So here's an end cap for popular selling products that's in a Los Angeles store. So we have great personalization, localization on top of social proof. So hopefully that gives you some idea of just how powerful social proof can be in commerce and how critical it is to the future of retail. I hope you've come up with some ideas about how you could use it in your customer experience. If this is valuable to you, I'd love it if you'd click the like button and subscribe to my channel. Not only will it keep you up with the latest content that I produce, but it'll help other people discover my content as well. If you have any feedback about this video or there's other topics you'd like to know about, feel free to leave me a note in the comments below. And until next time, happy commercing.